The use of wheeled armoured vehicles in combat has fluctuated according to the nature and tempo of the operations in which armed forces are engaged. However, the rapid growth of low and medium intensity operations in recent years has placed greater emphasis on mobility and armour than on firepower. This has led to a debate on how far the transition from mechanised forces relying mainly on tracked vehicles to forces in which the majority of vehicles are wheeled can progress without loss of combat capability. Two of the questions currently being addressed are, can wheeled armoured fighting vehicles be used to meet all the operational requirements of the contemporary world? And can wheeled armoured fighting vehicles be sufficiently well armed and armoured to be sent into combat without losing any of their essential off-road capability? The experience gained from the operations in which armed forces are currently engaged indicates that compact, mobile, well-protected vehicles are essential to success, especially given the increasing counter-insurgency nature of the majority of modern operations. One lesson being learned, or more accurately being relearned, is the high economic cost of such operations. The military can no longer rely on the relatively high budgets of the Cold War era, and although the political will to provide properly equipped forces for peacekeeping, counter-terrorism, and counterinsurgency operations remains the same, there is an increasing demand for more cost effectiveness in operations and equipment. This translates into smaller, more responsive forces, probably equipped with a family of wheeled armoured fighting vehicles, in place of a fleet of relatively large, heavy, tracked vehicles. Wheeled armoured cars were first used for reconnaissance tasks and general harassment of the enemy during the opening stages of the First World War. At the start of the Second World War, the West had little interest in wheeled armoured cars and only the German and French armies attached much importance to them. This was to change quickly after the shock success won by the mobile operations of the German armoured forces, which included armoured cars as the basic reconnaissance vehicle of the Panzer divisions. In the 1950s, the Soviet Army carried most of its infantry in wheeled armoured personnel carriers, and this trend continued throughout the 1960s, despite the introduction of tracked infantry fighting vehicles. Wheeled armoured fighting vehicles offer advantages over tracked fighting vehicles in certain roles, as they are more suited to long distance and rapid deployment than tracked. There are two main reasons for this. Wheeled vehicles need fewer refuelling stops, because the average road range of wheeled vehicles exceeds that of tracked vehicles by between 50 and 100 percent. And secondly, the average marching speed of wheeled vehicles on roads is between 50 and 100 percent higher than that of tracked vehicles. Since the end of the East-West confrontation, however, there has been a drive to develop expeditionary style forces to deal with the rapid emergence of regional crises and conflicts. In dealing with these crises, which are increasingly typified by their counterinsurgency nature, light ground forces, and especially wheeled armoured vehicles, have taken on a prominent role. Typical tasks offering considerable scale for the employment of wheeled armoured vehicles include patrolling, counterinsurgency operations, internal security, peacekeeping, and peace enforcement operations. Underlying this is the assumption that relatively light wheeled vehicles are more appropriate than the traditional heavy mix of tanks and tracked infantry vehicles for patrolling and controlling an area under threat from insurgents, guerrilla forces or terrorist occupation. The use of lighter wheeled vehicles is considered better suited to the mobile military presence essential to establishing and maintaining order and the rule of law without causing undue alarm to the civilian population. However, the increasing use of, imp use of improvised explosive devices, IEDs, and rocket-propelled grenade, RPGs, as the insurgents' weapons of choice, has led to alterations in the basic design of wheeled vehicles, so that they provide much higher levels of protection. Without this, such vehicles would be at a serious disadvantage, and their operational effectiveness would be reduced. Unfortunately, the levels of protection achieved by main battle tanks are simply not available to wheeled vehicles because of the effect the weight of armour needed would have on the vehicle's mobility. 
Such a limitation means that it is unrealistic to expect wheeled armoured personnel carriers, even those of 20 to 25 tonnes in weight, to provide protection against anything more powerful than a heavy machine gun. There is still no effective way to defeat high-velocity armour-piercing long rod penetrators fired from a high-pressure tank gun other than by weight of armour. Nor is there anything that current protective systems other than armour can do to defeat machine cannon, whose calibre and rates of fire have been increasing. However, such weapons are generally confined to national armed forces, while the weapons most often used against counterinsurgency forces are the IED, RPG and the AK-47. While an effective weight of armour is of real value against such as these, there are other ways of increasing protection based on improved sensors, on mobility, on high levels of training, on intelligence gathering and the timely dissemination of early warnings. Wheeled armoured vehicles are not necessarily at any greater disadvantage than tracked in such circumstances and they can be expected to perform just as well. Most of the wheeled armoured vehicles in service today, roughly 90% of them, weigh less than 20 tonnes. This compares to an almost even split in the case of tracked vehicles, where roughly 50% weigh 35 tonnes or less, and the other 50% weighs between 35 and 65 tonnes. It is clear, therefore, that there are some areas where it is impossible to employ either wheeled or tracked vehicles. Within the limits of current technology, however, tracked vehicles are essential at the heavier end of the scale because the wheeled version cannot yet fully meet that particular requirement. In the past, the need to reduce the weight of wheeled fighting vehicles generally meant fitting a small weapon of limited value. That is no longer the case. Although wheeled vehicles do not often mount the sort of high-pressure gun carried by a main battle tank, they can certainly deploy an anti-tank capability in the form of anti-tank guided weapons carrying a heat warhead. In addition, some wheeled armoured vehicles in the 25 to 30 tonne class are equipped with 105 mm guns, and this can provide significant firepower to an expeditionary force. Most armoured personnel carriers are armed with a machine gun for local defence and to provide limited fire support. Some vehicles are fitted with a turret-mounted cannon for added firepower, although the weight of the ammunition and the volume it occupies are important factors in the design of the vehicle and the role it is to play on the battlefield. Armoured personnel carriers equipped with cannon are often designated as infantry fighting vehicles, IFV. And this is a significant change, since IFVs can fight by themselves as well as transporting infantry. Although the IFV is not designed to be a light tank, it offers considerably more direct fire support than a simple machine gun. And this is made increasing use of in counterinsurgency and counter-terrorist operations, where the enemy is unlikely to be able to field a tank threat. The increasing use currently being made of wheeled armoured vehicles in the proliferation of low and medium intensity operations against skilled and determined enemies should be a sufficient demonstration that it is not essential to fit tracks to combat vehicles. It is more important that vehicles and forces are correctly structured and in sufficient strength to complete the task. This means that wheeled vehicles are more than adequate for use in conflict, unless, of course, there is a requirement to join combat against modern main battle tanks. The roles which wheeled armoured vehicles can perform are based on the operations of the parent formation. Current thinking is towards the development of broad spectrum intervention or expeditionary forces trained for traditional war fighting as well as peace enforcement, counterinsurgency operation and humanitarian missions on behalf of the United Nations and the regional organisations. Wheeled armoured vehicles used to be cheaper than their tracked counterparts. They were simpler and more use could be made of commercial off-the-shelf components, that is relatively inexpensive parts or subsystems such as engines and tyres from large series civilian production. Unfortunately the cost differential is no longer so marked. Wheeled armoured vehicles, especially the large multi-wheeled ones, have become increasingly sophisticated and as a result the lower procurement costs of wheeled vehicles in earlier years 
has, with few exceptions, disappeared. Wheeled vehicles do still retain one other cost advantage, however, which is that they tend to be less expensive to own and operate. They can travel farther than tracked vehicles for the same quantity of fuel, and their maintenance requirements are easier than with tracked vehicles. What is more, using vehicles with a basic family design reduces the size and cost of the spares holding, reduces the cost of driver and crew training, and allows maintenance to be planned at fleet level. This all helps to provide an outstanding deal for both the users and the owners of wheeled armoured fighting vehicles.